Sadhguru, what can I do for my Guru? How can I support you? I felt that like I want to do something, I didn't know what. The best thing you can do is don't poison yourself with all those things. That's the best thing you can do for your Guru. I want all of you to remember this. The best thing that you can ever do for your Guru, if at all if you feel like you want to do is that you drop your nonsense and grow. What's the best thing a garden can do for a gardener, hmm? To grow and bloom, isn't it? No, no, we want to do this to you, we want to do that to you. That's not the intention, that's not the goal. The best thing you can do for anybody is, you must do what they want, isn't it? Hmm? Not what you want. Always this is the problem. <laughs> the best thing you can do for anybody is you must do what they want. All this activity, I'm a very… people have, who have known me early, I was an extremely taciturn person. I never said anything. There were days when I never… I was not in silence nor was I spiritual. Okay? I was just there because most of the time whether you went to school or college or wherever you went, whether the students spoke or the teachers spoke, everybody spoke such nonsense. Most of the time I chose to remain silent because I was terrified of their conversations. <laughs> they opened their mouth. If they did not kill you with their bare breath, they kill you with horrible conversation. <laughs> Very few people on this planet can simply joyfully say something, it doesn't matter. You don't have to say some great thing. Simply pouring out of their heart, saying something or simply able to be with another person, very few people. All others are desperately trying to be smart or they're repeating something they heard somewhere, something they read somewhere, some nonsense endlessly. So I would never speak. Very rarely I would speak. In some places I was exuberantly boisterous, but in most of the other places I was Because I understood if I don't speak, they won't speak, that saves me <laughs> So now all this endless talking, this activity, non-stop, doesn't matter where I am, constantly I'm in groups of people, not even with individual people, constantly with huge groups of people, either in public, sitting behind a microphone or wherever I walk, there are minimum ten people around me. <laughs> so, this is not my personal choice. This is a terrible need that there is in the world. That if you do not communicate the way people know, if you do not behave and act the way people know right now, if you don't walk two steps with them, you can never walk them in a different direction. Hmm? So, there is nothing you can do. The best thing you can do is you grow and blossom. Drop your nonsense. Your past nonsense you leave it to me, present nonsense you handle. If you do that, that's the best thing. No, suppose you died, even if I died, I will not stop the spiritual part of my activity. So I'm not so concerned about that. Yes, we're concerned. The foundation could be hurt, activity could be hurt, but not the spiritual part of the work. The concern is that people will be here and if they don't grow, I 
planted people in my garden and they never blossomed, that I'm terrified of. So, those of you who are very patient, who want to come here for ten lifetimes and do it, I'm okay with them, but I think we must build an outer ashram for them. Even here there is in a way, but uh, we wouldn't like that to be here because of various reasons. We would like everybody who comes here to be absolutely there in the very core of what's happening. I don't want to create a core and a periphery here. Here there's only one burning spot, that's everywhere. <laughs> so, if you… you know, you seen the popcorn? You never seen popcorn? Hmm? See just a damn corn, how it flowered the right amount of heat, but some get burnt, some won't pop. That's because uh, they don't… all of them were given the same heat, but some don't receive it properly. They do funny things and instead of popping they get charred. Instead of flowering, have you seen a popcorn flowering? Hmm? That's one flower you can see it happening, right? The other flowers take too much time. <laughs> so right there it opens up in front of you. So, uh, have you seen this happening to people when they come to Inner Engineering Bhavaspandana? In three days time people are like that. But uh, we don't want them to stop there. <laughs> because we are Atanika Asapadu people. <laughs> you know what that means? <laughs> we desire for everything, we don't desire for this much growth or that much growth. We are not willing to settle for anything less than the whole. If you are willing to settle for peace, we could settle you very easily. If you're willing to settle for love, we would settle you very easily. If you're willing to s settle for blissfulness, we could settle you very easily. But we are Atthane Kasapadu. We won't settle for anything. We want it all. Because of that kind of mode, we just on and on and on. If you're willing to settle for any one of those things, peace, love, satisfaction, happiness, we could have settled you up very easily. So if you just want to settle for any one of them, it's okay, it's your choice. But… Uh, and you need not be in the core of things, you could be anywhere and still do that, you know. So, what could I do? Especially if Sadhguru is going to die tomorrow, you must blossom tonight, isn't it? Hmm? So I want you to look at life like this. Either you may die or I may die tomorrow morning. So, something should happen tonight. Isn't it so? So don't think in terms of weeks and months and years and decades or lifetimes. Think in terms of moments because life is in moments.